What's going on everyone? So a request that we often get at Right Tech, particularly from our e-commerce customers, is they want to know more about how to leverage Zapier and Google Sheets in order to automate tasks in their business. Now, Zapier can seem a little bit intimidating if you don't know much about it, but it's actually quite easy to use once you know what you're doing. And so today I'm gonna to take you through exactly how you can link up Zapier to Google Sheets in order to automate a number of different tasks from other systems that you use back to Google Sheets. Now for today's example, I'm going to use BigCommerce and link that into a Google Sheet and show you some of the functions and features that we can use by linking the two together. But the process is pretty much the same for all other systems. So once you see how this works, you'll have a pretty good idea on how to link virtually any system to Google Sheets. So with that said, let's jump in. So before I get started, a couple of prerequisites that you're going to need. So obviously you're going to need a Zapier account, you're going to need a Google account, and particularly a Google Sheets account set up, and then you'll need the information for whatever the other system is, in this case BigCommerce for me, that you want to connect back into Google Sheets through Zapier. Now, depending on exactly what system it is that you want to connect into Google Sheets through Zapier, sometimes you need a premium Zapier plan, but the plans are pretty reasonable, particularly for the amount of time that it can save you. For example, in this particular case, because I'm using BigCommerce, it's one of the premium connections, and so you'd need to be on a premium Zapier plan. Today, I'm gonna to show you two different directions. I'm going to show you exactly how to link a system into Google Sheets through Zapier, but I'll also show you the reverse and how you can load data into Google Sheets and have that data published back into your third-party systems. So the first thing you're going to do when you set up a new Zap is you're going to create what's known as a trigger. Effectively, a trigger is an action that happens in a source system, in this case, BigCommerce for me. And when that trigger happens, we want Zapier to do something. So first of all, you're going to have to connect up the particular application that you want to link in. Each different application has got different ways that it plugs into Zapier, ranging from single click sign-ons to, in the case of like BigCommerce, I needed to connect in through an API key. Now, if you have any trouble with any of your systems and trying to work out how to set up the initial connection, feel free to drop a message in the comments of this particular video, and I will help talk you through exactly how to set it up. Once you've created your connection in your trigger, you're going to be presented with a series of events that are pre-configured by that particular third party to work with Zapier. So in my particular case, I can see here that with BigCommerce, I can trigger on a new order or I can trigger on a new customer being created. In this particular case, I'm going to use new order as my example. Hit continue. You're then going to have to select which account, if there are multiple accounts that you have access to through the third party system that you've linked in, we can just hit continue. And then there's going to be the actual trigger. So in here, we've got a number of predefined statuses that have come through from BigCommerce, which we can look at and decide at which point we want to trigger this particular workflow to take effect. So in my particular case, I know that when an order first comes in, the first thing that happens is my orders get put into the awaiting payment status. So I'm gonna select awaiting payment and hit continue. And then what you'll see is Zapier will go away and fetch some of your orders to help you to be able to identify exactly which fields you'd like to create your workflow around. So if you click this link here, you'll be able to get a dropdown of various orders that are in your BigCommerce system. I'll just use uh, order B for now. And then down in this section, you get all the data that Zapier is receiving from the third party system, BigCommerce in this case. So if we just scroll down quickly, you can see things in here like the subtotal without tax or with tax, the status of the order, the order ID, information on the payment method, shipping method, shipping location, and then the customer's information. Now this will all become important in a moment and clear why we need all of this. So once we've reviewed all that and we're happy with that, we can hit continue. And then we're going to set up that we want to connect this into a Google Sheet. Now, when you first come to the screen, you'll be presented with a full list, something more like this, that shows you all the different options. Just search, if it's not one of the first ones, just search for Google Sheets at the top here and select Google Sheets. Now, Google Sheets is gonna present us a series of 
tasks that we can do or we can ask Zapier to do for us. For example, we can create a column, create a row, create multiple rows, copy a worksheet, etc. You can go down and read through these. And once again, if you ever have any questions about any of these specific features here, drop a comment in the chat of this video and I'll walk you through exactly how to use the different scenarios. In this particular case, because we're dealing with orders of a product, we're going to choose one of these two. We're going to want to either create a spreadsheet row or we're going to create multiple spreadsheet rows. Now, because I know that an order could have multiple line items, I'm going to choose to create multiple spreadsheet rows. However, in your case, if you knew that the third party system that you were connecting into was only providing one line of data, then you could absolutely just use create a single row. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to need to connect up your Google Sheets. Once you come in here and click connect a new account, Zapier will walk you through exactly what you need to do to connect that particular Google Sheet account to Zapier. Hit continue. Now we've got a few things that we need to set up. So first of all, we need to select exactly which drive we want to connect into. And then we need to find our spreadsheet. Now I'm going to jump over here for a moment. Here is a sample order spreadsheet that I've created that I want Zapier to deliver my information into. Now I'll talk a little bit more about these headings in a moment, but the main thing that I want to show you right now is that up in the URL, you'll get this series of numbers here. And if you copy that, when you're looking to connect in your spreadsheet, you can just paste that in your search and Zapier will find that exact Google Sheet from your drive without you having to go and search through everything. We then select exactly which worksheet we want to connect into. So you can see here, I've got two, I've got orders and I've got customers. So for this particular example, I'm going to use orders. Now, because I've set this up previously, these rows are already filled in. But when you first come to this screen, you're going to be shown a set of predefined fields that have been pulled in from your spreadsheet. So I said I'd come back to this and just to explain this a little bit more. When you connect in your Google Sheet, it's going to look at the top row to try and find the column headings that it thinks you want to populate from your connection back into the third party system that you've plugged Zapier into. So I'd recommend before getting to the stage of connecting in your Google Sheet, you go and, and create the file that you want, create the name, get the ID that I mentioned before, and create the column headings that you anticipate wanting. Now, you can go and change these column headings at any time and you can add new ones. So it's not a massive deal if you don't have them all there right at the beginning, but it is easier just to at least have some initial headers there for you to work from. So in my particular case, you can see here, I want to know the order number, the email, the first and last name of my customer. I wanna know what product they've bought, the price that they paid for it, and the quantity. Jumping back to my Zapier account, what you'll see here is that Zapier has pulled in those exact column headings from my Google Sheet. So order number, email, first name, last name, product, price, and quantity. Then it's as simple as clicking in here, hit show all options, and go and find the matching field that has been pulled in from the third party system. So in BigCommerce's case, they give me an ID field, which I know is my order number. So I'm going to put that in there. The email I can select once again and go and find. So you can see here billing address email. But for example, there may be other email fields further down that I could go and find like shipping email, for example. There you go, shipping address email. If the billing email is not the one that I'm intending to pull in to my order. First and last name, same thing. Just go in and find the appropriate first and last name from whichever particular field you want to extract. And this is where the examples come in really handy from BigCommerce sending data into Zapier for you to see. If you need to go and jump into the third party account, so like jump into BigCommerce and actually have a look and make sure that those fields are the right ones that you're wanting to pull in. Now, when you get down to products, price and quantity, this is where it gets a little bit different, but this is also where the fact that we set up multi-line entry is really important. So what you'll see with products, if we hit show all options and we go down to product name, for example, you'll see that this is actually a comma delimited list. So that is the first product up to that comma. The second product is up to that comma. 
and however many products this particular customer added to their order would be added to this comma delimited list. The same applies for the base price and a number of different pricing fields that you can see in here. So you can see there including tax, excluding tax, and if I had cost prices set up, they'd likely be in there as well in that same sort of comma fashion. And then exactly the same thing for the quantity. So product quantity is broken down. Now, the cool thing is that the systems are smart enough to keep these in order. So we know that two of the first product have been ordered, one of the second product, and four of the third product. Google Sheets and the third party system via Zapier We'll work together to help keep those columns in line with each other. So once you've got your different fields mapped, we can hit continue. We get a brief example here of the data that's going to be passed through to our Google Sheet. And in your case, you'll have a button to test the action. Now I'm going to hit retest action because I've set this up previously. But if we go retest action, Zapier will go away, think about it for a moment, and let me know once that's confirmed. If I jump back into my Google Sheet now, what you'll see there, what was blank before, has now been filled in. So my order number has come in, the client's email, first name, last name, and because we use that multi-line input, it's separated each product onto its own row, and attach the appropriate price and the appropriate quantities to each of them. This is a really effective way to be able to get systems like BigCommerce, Shopify, or it doesn't even have to be e-commerce, could be an inventory management system, a point of sale system, or virtually any system out there, to be able to grab information from that system and automatically put it into a spreadsheet for you to use elsewhere in your business. A little bonus tip here as well is because this Google Sheet is a live document, you can actually have additional columns in the spreadsheet that you use for your own working purposes that don't necessarily get used by Zapier. So for example, let's say in here I want to multiply those two to get a column that shows me the actual finished price or total price that was paid for each particular row, then you can absolutely add in a total column and have different formulas in here that will all calculate automatically. Now you will need to drag this formula down so that in the future when additional rows get added in, they get calculated automatically. But basically you can have all of that preset up so that as new orders get added in, these different fields calculate automatically for you. So that's the basics of how to extract data from a third party system and via Zapier pull it into a Google Sheet. Now for the next step, I'll show you how we do the reverse. It's a very similar process, but basically we could also take a Google Sheet, have data loaded into it, and then have Zapier take that data and load it automatically into our third party system for us. So in this particular case, I'm going to use my customer's spreadsheet because I want to use Zapier to automatically upload and create new customers for me back into my e-commerce platform from the spreadsheet rather than me having to manually log into the system and create new customers on the fly. So you can see here I've got an example spreadsheet but I'm going to talk you through this a little bit because there are a couple of nuances that are a little bit different with this spreadsheet to how you set up the previous spreadsheet I showed you. So jumping back into Zapier this time I've created a new zap that is the reverse of the last one. I have my trigger as a Google Sheet and I've set up my Google Sheet. And in my events, you'll see here there's a number of different events for you to choose from. Now, generally what I recommend is that for any system, this applies whether it's Google Sheets or any other third party system, if you have the option that says new or updated, I definitely recommend using that version as opposed to just new. The reason being that new or updated will fire the trigger anytime the data changes, not just the first time. Whereas if you have it set up as new, it will only fire the trigger the very first time Zapier detects new information in that particular row. It depends a lot on the different use cases, but generally speaking, I find that new or updated works a lot better for the tasks that I automate. So now that we've set that up, we hit continue. You'll have to plug in your Google Sheet information again here, but if you had previously set it up, like in my last example, then you should find that it's already pre-set up in here and you can just select your existing account. You'll go through the same process again as we showed in the previous example of selecting your drive 
and finding the appropriate sheet. And we select which worksheet we want to pull data from. In this case, I'm going to be pulling from my customer's sheet this time. You then need to select a trigger column. And this is quite important again as well. The trigger column is the column that when updated is going to tell Zapier that it needs to do something. Now, generally speaking, I'll leave this blank so that it is on any column. That way, if any information changes in that particular row, then Zapier fires the trigger. But there may be use cases where you only want Zapier to fire if a very specific column is updated. And if that is the case, then you can just click the drop down and select exactly which column you want to be the trigger that fires Zapier for you. Hit continue. And now Zapier is going to show you data that it's found in your spreadsheet. Hit continue. It's found spreadsheet row A and it's found my example customer that I've set up. That's all fine, so we can just hit continue. Now you select the third party system that you want to send this data into. In this case, I'm using BigCommerce again, but this process is very similar, if not exactly the same for most other systems. So you can follow the same process for your third party system. That said, if you do get stuck at all, feel free to drop a comment on this video and I'll help you through exactly how to set up your particular action for your third party system. Now, once again, these third party systems have all got their own events pre-created. So you are limited to what those systems allow you to do. In this particular case, you can see that BigCommerce allows me to create a coupon, create a customer or create a customer address. I want to create a customer, so I'm going to select that. And this does raise a good point. Before you spend too long diving into this, I would recommend creating a little simple zap that gets you to this particular stage so that you can go and see what events can be created for that particular third party system. No point in you spending a whole lot of time creating a spreadsheet for a particular function only to find then that that third party system doesn't have the event that you're looking for. So once you've selected your event, just hit continue. You'll need to connect in your account if you haven't already. And this is where one of the key differences comes in compared to what I showed you in the previous example. Now, in the last example, we went and created our spreadsheet first, and then Zapier pulled in that list of column headers for us to choose from. When you are pushing data from a Google Sheet into a third party system like BigCommerce, it works a little bit differently because once again, BigCommerce has already predefined which fields it requires you to send in order to perform this particular action. So in this particular case, BigCommerce has already defined for me that I need to create a first name, a last name, an email address, a company, a phone number, and optionally notes if I want to. So the key difference for you in this particular example is that instead of creating your spreadsheet columns first, what you want to do is you want to get to this stage of the zap and then you want to go and grab these column headings and create them over in your sheet. So as you can see, I've done exactly that. I've gone and grabbed the column headings that BigCommerce presents to me as being required and I've gone and set those up automatically as my column headings in my Google Sheet. That way, when I get to this stage, it's a pretty straightforward process of then just working out which fields in my Google Sheet connect into which fields in the BigCommerce required fields. So you can see here, I've connected my first name column from Google Sheet with the first name required field from BigCommerce. And I've just gone down and done that for each of the different fields. Now you can see here, some of these fields aren't required, company isn't required, phone isn't required, notes aren't required. But generally speaking, if you can, I would create those so that later on, if you do need to add that information in, you don't have to come back in here and recreate your zap or edit your zap. Once you've got those set up, you just hit continue. And much like before, it's going to give you an opportunity to test your action. Now for you, you'll just get a test button down here rather than retest this action, but you should get the ability to test the action regardless. So I'm going to hit retest action just to show you exactly what this process looks like. Now in this particular case, I've had a failed warning returned and I know exactly why that is. That's because I've run this test before and I've already created that particular customer in my BigCommerce account. Now, if you recall earlier, I talked about the fact that we need to use the new or update function. Now in this particular case in the action, this is a really important point, the action in BigCommerce only allows us to create. It doesn't allow us to update in this particular instance. Not all systems are like this. Some systems will let you create and update, but this is something important to pay attention to. 
you need to know whether the system is going to allow you just to create items the first time or whether it's going to actually allow you to update items. So just to show you this example end to end, I'm going to jump into my BigCommerce account for a moment. This is just a sandbox store of mine. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete that customer that I created earlier in my test. Now that that's gone, I can run my test action again. And this time you should see that it'll work. There we go, it's worked. And if I go back in here and refresh, you'll see now that that customer has been created for me. There it is. And if I dive in here, we can see all the information pulled in from my Google Sheet. So everything that was in this row here is now up here in BigCommerce. Now, final point on all of this. Once you have created and tested that your Zap does what you want, you can then set it up to publish. Once you publish the Zap, it's going to run continuously in the background and generally fires either instantly or every five to 10 minutes. So for you, that means that you could now have a live Google Sheet in this particular example, where you go and add new customers anytime you want a new customer account created in your e-commerce platform. Zapier will pick up that you have created that customer in the Google Sheet, it will use the field mapping that you have set up inside your Zap, and it will automatically go and create those customers for you. You now have a really simple way to create customers in your e-commerce platform without having to log into that particular platform and go through the manual process of creating those customers one by one. Once you have a Zap like this in place, you can also copy and paste large amounts of data from other spreadsheets onto this Google Sheet. Zapier will pick up those triggers and automatically action creating those customers for you. In bulk. So there you have it everyone, those are the basics of how to create a Zap that either pulls data from a Google Sheet or pushes data to a Google Sheet. This is a really powerful tool and very simple tool to set up to automate tasks that can normally be very painstakingly manual in your business. As I mentioned for today I've used an e-commerce platform as an example but many of the processes that I've walked you through today apply regardless of what the third party system is. That said, once again, if you have any trouble at any time with your particular zap, feel free to drop a note in the comments of this video and I will jump in and help you with exactly what to do to get it set up.